Welcome back to another video. My name is Mark King. I'm 16 with my own bait company. And today I'm gonna to show you everything you're gonna need or want to start making your own fishing lures at home just like I do. We got a lot of new people to the channel and some of you guys have been requesting a video like this. I did one a couple months ago, but I figured I'd do an update video. And so yeah, these are some of the things you're gonna need. So not only am I gonna show you exactly what you're gonna to need to make fishing lures, I'm gonna show you how to do it, okay? You're gonna need a cup, I'll go over it later, but you're gonna need a cup and plastisol. We're gonna throw this in our microwave. You're gonna need one of those and don't use the one you use food in, okay? That's not a good idea. I'm gonna start four minutes in mine. I have a thousand watt, so I know this is gonna be about halfway where we need to be. And after four minutes, we'll go ahead and take this out and stir it and we'll put it back in there. All right, so starting off, you're gonna need a cup. This is a two cup. You can get a one cup or four cup, depending on how much you need. Two cup is a good way to start. You're gonna need an injector. I get those from Walmart or Amazon. You're going to need an injector. This is a 10 ounce single injector. I get these from Bass Tackle. This is a dual injector, both six ounce. And then you're gonna need a blending block, which basically, basically that blending block is gonna funnel those two into one. You're also gonna want a pair of gloves. Those are very helpful. A respirator, you don't want to breathe this in. I recommend doing this outside with a breeze or a fan. Uh, doing it inside with no ventilation just isn't good. You're going to need a knife, something to stir your plastic with, and then you need something to measure out all your glitters. All right, so now for pigments and glitters, we're making black and blue today, so I have this black set aside and some royal blue flake in 25. So you're going to need some pigment, which I have right here, and you're going to need some glitter. Now, I get all these from Lureworks, and I get all of my pigments from Lureworks, and I also get some from Dead On Plastics. So all these glitters, each glitter costs around five bucks. This one, I think I think the bigger size is six or seven dollars, but the smaller size is anywhere from four to five dollars. These are some colors that I set aside that if you know if you can't go and buy 50 different colors, that's fine. You don't need that many. You can get a red, blue, you can make a watermelon red. Blue is really nice, gold's really natural. I like having purple, but it's not needed. Any shad pattern, you might want some silver. Green is always nice to have, and black is gonna be your most common. I recommend getting black. Now you can get these in all different sizes. For instance, this is a, well, the label came off, but this is size 40 in purple, and this one is 25. So 25 is a little bit smaller than 40, right there. I think this one should be 40. And then I get the hex cut. There's also square cut, you know, but don't make it complicated. All right, now for pigments. Here's where you can get into a lot of money spent. Okay, this bottle right here costs $7. This one right here, I believe is six or $7. Okay, so this is green pumpkin. If you can only get five to 10 colors, these are the colors I recommend. Green pumpkin, a black and a white. Dead on plastics is where I get mine. Lureworks also carries them. Some kind of purple, I have a black grape. Brown is nice depending on what colors you wanna make. A blue, I threw this in here because I think a blue is very valuable in my opinion. A sartreuse, and then I have a red and a watermelon. A watermelon is gonna be the first one you need to buy in my opinion. So that's where I get all of my pigments and sometimes instead of using liquid pigment, you use pearl powder. So this is completely different. This is white, this is purple, and this is smoke. I don't use these as often, but all of mine are from Barlow's Tackle. That company is great. They carry a lot of different bait making supplies, but you can also use pearl powder. And now to addition to that, there are things like highlight powder. So that's purple, that one's blue, and that one is green. So basically what this does is it just highlights these colors in pigment forms. So if I take this green, I can have a green base and then I can have a blue highlight on top of that green. This is glow powder. These tend to be more expensive. This is like $22. I get these from Dead On Plastics. Again, you don't need it, but you know, it is cool. So along with that, you're also gonna need molds. This is gonna be where a lot of your money is spent is gonna be on molds, because each mold's anywhere from 100 to 200 if you're getting a good quality mold. 
Okay, these are aluminum molds. They are not the cheap ones from Amazon that are like stone molds or whatever. You know, these are gonna last a lifetime. They are worth the money. However, they are a lot more. So that's the grub mold. And then right here, right here we have five inch stick bait. So some people have asked me what's the best mold to start with. In my opinion, just whatever you like fishing with, whatever you enjoy fishing with is gonna be the mold you wanna go with. So if you like fishing with grubs for trailers, for jigs or whatever, I'd go with this one. If you like throwing stick baits, definitely go with this one. So it's all personal preference. And you know, when you're buying all these colors and all these glitters, it also has to do like with what mold you're making. So if you're buying a jerk bait mold or a swim bait mold, you'll probably want some more glitters towards, you know, shad imitations. So yeah, whatever mold you decide to go with, whatever you like fishing with, that's how you decide your mold. And once you decide your mold and what colors you wanna make in that mold, that's when you go to your glitters and your pigments. So yeah. All right, this is after four minutes and it is completely jello. It's still very hot, but we are nowhere near done. So come on, get off the knife. We're gonna throw it back in the microwave. So yeah, this is pretty much everything that you're gonna need. This is everything you basically need. You know, cups are gonna be anywhere from 10, 20 bucks, depending on how many you get. The dual injector, I believe, was 300. It also comes with that. I think this injector was like 180, 190. You know, a pair of gloves, you know, respirator. Each mold, I think this one's like 170. I could be wrong. But each mold's like 150, 200 if you're getting the good ones. You can get cheaper molds, however, you do get what you pay for. You know, each jar of glitter, these are all big sizes. So these are all the four ounce jars. You can also get the two ounce. Starting out, I recommend getting these. So they're like anywhere from four or five bucks for things of glitter. And for pigments, these are all the four ounce bottles. You can get two ounce bottles, but because I have, you know, bigger bottles here, I use them often. So yeah, each, each bottle is gonna be again, four or $5 if you're getting the two ounce ones. And then for pearl powder, same deal, five or six bucks, you can get one of these. So yeah, it all adds up pretty quick and I'd say maybe about four or 500 bucks you can actually start doing this and have a good collection of molds and injectors. But yeah, these aluminum molds are worth the money. I get these at Angling AI. And yeah, I do recommend their molds. And it is expensive, but it is fun. And if you're going to take the time and learn how to do it right, it is better in the long run. Okay, and for plastic, this is a five gallon bucket. This one's empty, because I've already used it, but I get it from Dead On Plastics. The swim bait jerk bait blend is the medium blend, and it, because it's the black label, this is sinking plastic. I buy these in the five gallon. It's like 150 shipped, so these are like 150 bucks for five gallons of it. And if you, if you don't want to spend that, you can get a gallon, which I believe is anywhere from 40, 50 bucks. So. So yeah, dead on plastics is where I get my plastic. I get it in the five gallons, but you can get it in a gallon if you do not want to spend that kind of money. All right, our plastisol is nice and hot. So we're just gonna stir it in. And by doing this, we're gonna end up putting a lot of bubbles in it. But along with these, we also have moisture bubbles in here. So that is where our vacuum chamber comes in handy. So I get these off of Amazon. These vacuum chambers, I believe, are about a hundred bucks off of Amazon. And you're also going to need a pump to go along with it. And depending on which one you get, the price is going to vary on that. But these are very helpful because getting bubbles in your plastic isn't fun. Now, I wouldn't say the vacuum chamber is needed. However, I do highly recommend one. We're just going to set it in there. Close it up, close it up, shut our valve. Now we can go ahead and turn it on. And that's just gonna sit there like that. All right, we got all our bubbles out and now we are gonna add some black. Here's where you're gonna need your knife. And we're just gonna stir this in.
just like that. All right, now we're gonna add some flake. We got two different sizes. This is the 40, this is the 25. That is the difference right there. Just gonna take our measuring spoon, and add some flake. Do the same thing with our 40. Now we'll just mix this in and we should have our color. All right, so we got our color right there looking good. So now this is ready to inject into our molds. We got our plastic ready. These are my swim bait molds. That's what we're gonna inject today. We're gonna use our glove, of course. I've burnt myself a couple times and it is, it's not fun, it's really bad, okay? So, and some people say they have issues with denting and whatnot, and all you gotta do is make sure your plastic is up to temp. I like to inject maybe three, 300 to 310, and just make sure you hold steady pressure. You basically just have to learn your mold and learn how to inject it, because every mold is different. And once you do that, you should be able to get the hang of it. And sometimes, even when you do it all day, every day, sometimes you will mess up and have air bubbles. That does still happen. But yeah. And these molds, since they're, the way they're designed, we don't have to top these off, but normally, but normally if your mold has a runner like this, I'll show you real quick. Normally, if your mold has a runner like this, a lot of times when that plastic is injected into your mold, it shrinks. So when it shrinks, it starts to create air pockets. And when you top that off, you're ensuring that your bait is going to be complete and perfect every single time. So yeah, these are just top pour. So basically, I'm just injecting it here and the swim bait's right here. So the top right here is already enough to fill that complete swim bait. Another thing that is handy to have cost you five six more dollars is some heat stabilizer when you're reheating plastic or doing a remelt with baits that are old like if you have baits that are store-bought and you're reheating them i highly recommend using heat stabilizer you know just something handy to have that no one really talks about all right so after your baits cool for maybe five minutes or so we can go ahead and come on Okay, there we go. Once we open up our mold, we got our swim baits right here. And all you gotta do, once you take these off, I just like to lay them down nice and neat on the tray. And we'll let these cure for 24 to 48 hours before we bag them up and sell them. So we're gonna go ahead and do that the rest of them. beautiful swim bait these are on my website I do sell these so let's get our last one and there you go perfect so we'll lay these on the tray we'll let those cure for 24 hours or so and then those are ready to be packaged but yeah and then you can take all this and remelt it and make some more bait out of it. So yeah, nothing goes to waste. So here's a few swim baits we made. I hope this video helped you guys out. And let me know if you want to see the same thing, but for jigs and pouring lead and tying skirts and all that. But yeah, if y'all have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I will answer them. Appreciate you guys staying to the end of the video and I will see you in the next one.